I had heard a, an all call to action from Dr. Slavin from Mass General, and they were looking for, at that time, they were looking for 3D printed masks. And I started experimenting with that. And then I started experimenting with prototypes for shields. And I put a picture of that on Twitter and I got a response from Mike Looney down in Cape Cod, who I know. And Mike said, gee, I'm doing the same thing. And he sent me a picture back with basically the same models and things that I was working on. And we said, okay, well, why don't we start talking to each other and team up on this? We wanted to use the least amount of uh, filament or the plastic that makes up the, the visor, but having, having it so that it would be um, giving the ability for anybody to really make a replacement shield. And so um, what we came up with was a design that uses a, a traditional three hole punch and a, a transparency sheet to have replacement shields on the front. Remember Mike with the transparencies, cause I went into school. Exactly. And I, I started digging around the closet and I, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I found some. Cause nobody uses them anymore. And I was like, I took the box cause I'm like, Nobody's going to miss this. And then, like Mike said, I mean, our middle school, they started digging around. They found a 1,000 of these sheets. What we're doing is kind of a hybrid of what Doug and Mike are doing. You know, we, one, we are collecting shields here. In fact, we have uh, drop-off bins for people to uh, bring their 3D printed shields in. And it's amazed me uh, how quickly the network could grow. Uh, in Minneapolis, St. Paul area, we have 150 people. Uh, that are printing right now, including companies like Toro and Polaris uh, that will print these uh, shields for us, but then they don't know what to do with them. And so they bring them to us and then we help with the distribution. And really that should be the end goal. I mean, if we can get people mm -hmm. to distribute these to the healthcare workers that are in their backyard, they feel good about it. Their healthcare workers feel good about it. And, and people feel like they're doing something to fight back. So the protocol that we set up with the hospitals and um, other healthcare facilities that are accepting these face shields is one, I expect them, to accept them and then I deploy them with a volunteer to deliver them to um, whoever's accepting those um, face shields or whatever medical equipment we're delivering. And then of course the risk officer, um, most hospitals and medical care facilities have a risk officer and they inspect all the equipment um, before it is um, deployed to the staff. And then another caveat, when we have this deployed, we um, have them disinfect it when it arrives and then teach the people that will be using it how to disinfect these items because they're reusable. Vicki, I can tell you what people are telling us. Uh, our emergency room doctors and our ICU nurses are contacting us and they're saying we can't officially ask you for the <laughs> equipment, but we desperately need it. Uh, and, and so anytime that you can get people the equipment that they desperately need, whether they can ask or not, uh, you feel good about that. I wanted to include uh, yep. Sajay Shada here because she's part of the network too, and you have many students who are part of um, what's going on. Three of you are educators. So Shada, can you describe your experience with the project so far and how you got involved? I believe I first got an email from Mr. Scott and he asked um, if uh, we were interested in joining something. The current model we're printing is two pieces and it's it prints, each um, piece prints about 53 minutes long, which is way faster than what we initially had. So I think the process is <clears> much quicker. Um, for me, this is my first time joining something like this. So I think it was, it was really overwhelming seeing like the amount of things that go behind. Um, just some, a small act, but still something that could help so many people. So I thought it was really cool and I was so glad to be part of this. My purpose behind trying to include students in this project was that exactly. Um, this is probably and hopefully something that we only see once in our lifetimes. And these kids, you know, I want them to be able to look back and say, I did something, I contributed, I helped. I think Mike would go back to the, the, the our first week when we started, remember uh, the the request you received from, from oh, yeah. the opposition. Yeah. You tell that well, story. Uh, originally, <clears throat> Originally, they, they had requested uh, 10,000 of the shields, oh, 10,000 of the visors and 60,000 right. shields. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm looking at it going, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but 
I suppose I can try, you know, so that was, I mean, that really showed, you know, the desperation of, of really, you know, getting these things to the healthcare workers. It's greatly appreciated. My hospital administrators and risk um, um, specialists and my EDs, emergency directors are just very grateful for anything that we are giving them right now because it's a really um, difficult day for them. Um, they're going in, a lot of them aren't even seeing their families, they're self-isolating because they don't want to pass on um, COVID-19 to their families. So the work that you're doing is incredibly important and it is saving lives.